so holy we can't even measure it. There's no measuring stick for God's holiness. You can't. We can't even fathom it. It's too far above our thinking because when you were born, you had Adam and Eve's nature and you were an unholy vessel. Remember something about God. He alone is holy and righteous and pure and true and just. The only time that your life changes is when you're endued with His life in you. Then you become His righteousness. Then you have His holiness in you. Then you get His wisdom and His knowledge and discernment. The problem is all those words revolve around one thing. Thy word, O Lord. The living word of God. Or is all those things in you. The problem with the body of Christ today is they've forgotten who's come to live with inside of them. They've really forgotten the one that went to that cross. It says in Colossians, the fullness of the Godhead dwells in bodily form. The fullness of the Godhead comes to live in you when you get filled with the living waters. That's Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. All its power, all its authority. We lost power and authority when Adam and Eve ate the apple. Okay, fine. But we had one that loved us so much. His whole desire is to have us back to oneness with Him. He went to the cross. And when He said, it is finished, He said, here's the keys to my kingdom, but here's the keys to your relationship with me. Here's the keys that can now transform you and allow the living waters, the fountain of life, to come from heaven into us so that we can truly be a new vessel of God's honor and glory living through us to touch lives. And the body of Christ as a whole, what I've seen in 22 and a half years, has lost their way because they go to a church, don't realize they are a church. They go to go do things instead of being led to do things by the Holy Spirit. We get into all these works things. You can go online and check out all these ministries. You've got all these doing programs. Do, 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 do. Not one of them says, listen, what is the Lord leading you to do? What does God want to do through you? You are to remain dead so His life can live through you. We miss that part. Everybody wants to come be part of a, a ministry and they jump up and down and I love you, Jesus, you're so holy. Really? Then how come you go out and go right back to being you once you leave a building? Why don't you allow the life of Christ to sustain you in every step that you take? You want a rewarding, enriched life? Let God transform you into His image. Amen? Amen. Thy word also is the great I am. Thy word is the living word. The living water is the living bread. See what I'm saying? The word is so much more than you picking up and opening up the Bible. It's living. It's active. It says it's sharper than a two-edged sword in the book of Hebrews. It's alive. Too many of us get filled with the Holy Spirit and then we put a weight on Jesus' head and then say, okay, sit down, take it easy, I got this. Really? No, you don't. Because if you had it all together, you wouldn't need Jesus. Life without Jesus really stinks, doesn't it? Amen. I know my first 37 years were not very pleasant. I was not a very nice human being. We'll leave it there. <laughs> that thing. Thank you, Jesus. You killed him. In Psalm 119, 105, it says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. The reason we're not on that path is you're going to find out today why we don't walk with his word be in that light and that lamp. You're going to find out why you don't speak thy word, O Lord, and expect it to do the same thing, God, that he said in the beginning, by the word of the mouth, the word of his mouth, the heavens and the earth were made. You have that same power. It's amazing how many Christians walk in defeat because they don't speak the word of power. His word is power. His word is all authority. His word is life. His word is blessing. His word is healing. His word is deliverance. His word is comfort, joy, peace. His word is all that because it's living. And the reason you don't speak peace and joy and life and abundance into your existence the way God did, He spoke it into existence. I've given you all power and authority. I've given to the Son. I've given to all my children. But we don't because we've got some issues. Well, Sue doesn't, but the rest of us do. All right, so get it all together. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> she told me one time she wasn't perfect. I said, there I go. You made me a liar. Thank you, Jesus. 
But when we can laugh at ourselves like that and realize we are in perfect creations, there's only one guy that's perfect, it takes the pressure off of you. But what it should do is now turn your expectations into back into God. For the perfect one to take you over from the inside out. Forget what it looks like on the outside. That means nothing to God. I don't even, whatever ailment you even have, God will fix the physical stuff. It's the emotional pain you've been through in life that is the hardest thing for God to heal because we don't want nobody touching that. That justifies your anger. It justifies your unforgiveness, your bitterness, whatever in you. You'll justify that because of the pain you have. Well, I'm entitled to it. No, you're not. You're not entitled to it because he said you must forgive to be forgiven. It all starts right here inside, not on the outside. And we must go back to allowing God to consume us with his spirit to take us over. That path that we're to be on, in your Bibles in Matthew 7, Verses 13 and 14. Hallelujah. Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. I've heard this verse used wrong so many times. Now what that verse is saying is there's only one way into heaven. And that's through the cross of Jesus Christ. He's the only doorway. But do you notice in that line it says, there are many who go in by it. Many people say that verse means you can't go into heaven unless you walk on this perfect highway of holiness thing. Nonsense. Don't go there. That is not what that says. You study the Bible and you cross-reference it. You ask the Holy Spirit to show you what that means. It says many are going to go in still. But their path is not in the light. It's going to be a light of destruction. You're going to have way more many bruises and cuts and dings and hardships than you could have had if you walked on His path with His light being a lamp unto your feet. Okay? There's two ways into heaven for you. His way, or once you're born again and saved, you go back out into the world and you're going to do it your way. You know Jesus, you've read the Bible, you're saved, you're filled with the Spirit, but you have an agenda. I told you, I've shared somebody here this morning, they banged my chest once at God. Once. <laughs> once. Told them how I was going to serve Him and do it. You should have seen the x-rays and the MRI. Didn't happen for three months. <laughs> you ha doctors were so confused how God could fix that without surgery. They wanted to put a rod in my back. They wanted to fuse this together, that together. And I said, no, Jesus is going to heal me. I'm in trouble, but Jesus is going to heal me. <laughs> they looked at me like I had two heads, and they went, no, you need surgery. And I said, no, I don't. The Lord told me I'm going to learn who the boss is, and I won't bang my chest at him again, because I walked out from his path. I walked back into the wide road. Was I born again on my way to heaven? You bet. God didn't do that. I did it to myself because I chose the wide way. And I walked out from under grace. And I walked back in the ways of the world. And with that, He gave me every red light you could give a man to stop going the way I was going. But Dennis knew so much. He was so special. His head was about this big with spiritual pride. And I thought I was going to conquer the world for Jesus. I realized he already took care of that part. But it happens to everybody unless you stay on the narrow road. Is that highway of holiness we've talked about in here. But you can't stay there unless you ask for the grace and you let God to change your heart. Everything in your journey with Jesus Christ is about what's in your chest. Not in the natural, not what you have. It's never about what the world can offer you. And if you want what the world offers you, what's going to happen is, is you're going to get on that wide road. And that's where destruction comes on so many Christians. You should never have that come on you. Life's going to happen anyway. You're going to go through pain. You're going to go through sorrow. You're going to go through loss. This stuff happens. You'll go through financial hardship, stuff like that. This, it happens. They say that shouldn't happen to a Christian. Yes, it does. My wife and I have been through it. We went through a lot of financial things years ago when we lost everything a couple times. You know why we went through that? 
So that just give me Jesus, that song. You can have the world, give me Jesus. It was one of the best things we ever went through. Was it hard? Did we cry a lot? God, what have we done wrong? How could this have happened to us with your children? We said all those things to God like you have. But guess what? He says, oh no, this is for my glory. Now we're not in love with the world. People can't have us because we belong to Jesus. So now staying on that narrow road is so much easier because nothing owns us but Jesus. That's where freedom in Christ comes in. When nothing owns you. Not your husband, your wife, your children, your grandchildren. Jesus, when you know who owns you, you will truly be set free and you'll want to be on the narrow road because that's where Christ is with you. He never leaves us nor forsakes us. But if you get on that wide road, like I said, anybody that says that scripture means you can't get to heaven, they don't know what they're talking about. They haven't studied. Watch the bad leaven that's out there today because we're in a day and time this year. Choose you this day. Choose you this day to test the spirits of God. Whether what people are saying, I don't care how they're dressed, I don't care how many diplomas they got. If they haven't listened to the Holy Spirit and they're teaching you a carnal doctrine, don't you dare listen to it. It's bad leaven. And once it gets in your mind, it'll get in your heart. So many people are going to come to lead you astray with this book. Why do you think I push everybody to read this book every day? I don't care if it's just 15 minutes in the morning. If your life is that busy that you don't have 15 minutes in the morning to spend with Jesus, then ask Him to change your schedule. And you know what He'll do? He'll change it. I know a lot of you are busy. you got tough jobs. You're busy all the time. Tell God you need an extra 15, 20 minutes with Him in the morning. I guarantee you, you get it. Because when you tell Jesus you want to be with Him, oh, He'll stop the earth from spinning. It's in the book. He stopped it for a whole day to win the battle, okay? Amen. They need to get across the sea. How'd that work? We can't get there. No, they couldn't. God said, here, lift, lift the scepter of righteousness and the ocean parted. And they went on dry ground, not muddy ground. They went on dry ground. His is dry ground. The waters will never overtake you. Huh? Amen. That's Amen. Isaiah 43. Though you walk through the rivers, they will not overtake you. Though you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. Thank you, walk through the fire. You know why? Because Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego, when they came out, you couldn't even smell smoke on them. And it melted the people that threw them in. How about that? You couldn't even smell it on them. The same is going to be for you what they're going to smell on you when you walk through the fire and you've been refined and you've been healed. You know what they're going to smell? The fragrance of the Son of the living God living through you. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus. You can't buy that perfume in the store, ladies. You can't. They don't make that because I've smelt and tasted the Lord and it's different than anything they make here on this planet because it wasn't made here. It was made in heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. In John 10.10 10, it says, The thief comes to accept, to steal, to kill, to destroy. Jesus came to have life more abundantly. Now, I put these two verses together for a reason. When you're on the narrow road, you're going to have the abundant life. Don't say, oh God, I'm going to have a Ferrari tomorrow. No, you're not. If you want one, shame on you. Um, you don't need a $400,000 car. I'm sorry. I'll tell you what, I saw that on the computer two weeks ago. They were running out of the one style of Bugattis. They're like a million and a half dollars. And people were running the flock to buy them. I'm going, something. <laughs> they were telling people to go out and buy that car because they're going to run out of them soon. I'm going, wow. A million and a half dollars. They're, they're lining up to get it because they're not going to make them. Okay. It's, it's beyond my imagination to even think that way. Somebody give me three million dollars, say the only thing I'm going to do is go buy a whole lot of land here. We're going to build an entire Christian complex. We're going to have outreach centers, food centers, clothing centers, and everything else. And we're going to make sure everybody who knows the Lord Jesus Christ is going to be taken care of. And then after that, the ones that don't have, we're going to make sure they're all fed too. Because that's what the church is supposed to be doing. Amen. Yes, God bought me a new vehicle. Hallelujah. I inherited some money. Okay, I bought that so I could go out and do more ministry. He even told me, he said, this isn't so much for you as it is so you're freed up from one car. Now you guys have two. Now get out and do my business. <laughs> so the whole thing of him getting another vehicle for us, was it to make it easier on us? Yes. Was it a blessing from heaven? Yes. Well, like I said, that's not mine. It's his. I'm a joint heir with God. The rightful owner to everything in this universe, His name is Jesus Christ. He owns it all. Amen. The clothes on your back today, He owns them, by the way. You may have went to the store and bought them. Or like Michelle, she makes a lot of clothes. Praise God. 
God gave her that gift. But guess what? It came from heaven. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. You don't have the abundant life because you don't want to walk the narrow road. The narrow road is the place of peace and joy and being led and taught by the Holy Spirit. Walking in discernment and wisdom and godly understanding. Empowered with the living word of God leading you. The problem we don't speak with authority is because we don't know who we are. The thief, Satan himself, can't steal from you if you know who you are. You realize that? People say, I'm getting attacked all the time. Really? Why? Tell to go pound sand. <laughs> he lost. <laughs> yeah, go pound sand. Tell the devil, go pound sand. You know what he's going to do? If you say it with authority that Jesus gave you, he'll go run it. He will run so fast because now you know who you are. The living word destroyed him. That's why it says, Thy word, O Lord, is the title of the sermon. When you speak the living word in darkness, expect it to melt and to flee. Because he doesn't have any right to you unless you give it to him. He lost his rights at the cross. I bet all those demons were jumping up and down just like in Carmen's video. They was probably laughing and jumping. We got him. Son of God's dead. Oh, no, he's not. Because He has risen, and He is alive, and He's come to live within us, and He wants us to speak the living Word of God with power and authority. It's so time for the body of Christ to put your little lives aside, know the big God that lives in you, and then you'll pray big. Mm -hmm. You'll speak that Word of your circumstances, and you'll watch them change. Yeah. Ezekiel 12, 24 and 28, the Word of the Lord, the Word of the Lord, will be spoken and performed and delayed no longer, declares the Lord of hosts. The Word of the Lord, the living Word, will be spoken. Why are you Amen. not speaking the Word of God in your circumstances, in your sicknesses, whether you're struggling on a job, whether you're struggling financially? Speak the Word at it. Speak it. But speak it with authority. And so many, you're going to find out right now why you don't. And we all go through this. Everybody goes through life and everybody gets hurt. Everybody gets wounded. Everybody gets discouraged. There isn't a soul on this planet that doesn't go through that stuff. Life happens and you all know that. Like I said, this is an entire ministry. Even all the other people that come here. Pray for all the brothers and sisters that are on vacation. Judy's in California. Some of the ones that are traveling. Make sure you're covering your family members with prayer. Because this time of year, the crazies are on the road. Thank you. Hallelujah. In Psalm 139, 23 and 24. We're going to go through a few scriptures that are going to show you why you don't speak with authority. And why you doubt. Why you don't believe it's going to happen for you. Verses 23 and 24. This is why you don't walk in the light. You're on that narrow road right here. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Mm -hmm. Try me, know my anxieties, and see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. Whoa. Everybody says, well, it's just about sin that's inside of you. No, it's not. I asked the Lord about that one. I said, why are you using that? I said, well, everybody uses that because any wicked way within me. Wickedness, if you break down that word, a lot of times you've got stuff in you that's hurt you. That's why I tell people when you're praying with people and you hear stuff coming off their tongue, step back. Because if you really listen to what they're saying, it's not them speaking, it's the pain. Something happened to their heart and soul. They've been damaged. They've been hurt. What you're getting off their tongue is pain. God needs to restore the soul of Psalm 19, 7, Psalm 23, 3. God's Word will restore your soul. You look at those two scriptures right there in Psalm, what's it, 19, 7 and 23, 3. Guess what? He's come to restore. Joel 2, He's come to restore everything that's been done to you, all the damage that's been done to you. This is so important. You know what thy Word says, O God. Because thy Word is truth. Thy Word is power. Psalm 138 his name will be magnified above His Word. It's above the heavens and the earth. It can't return to Him void without accomplishing that which it was sent to do. It's so important that we read the Scriptures and believe every word of them. God didn't put in here, 
Come and reason with me. Come and reason. So when you go to God and you say, you've given me the authority that this Father that you've given the Son is now given to me. Oof. Go to Him with that. Amen. How dare you go to God with fear? Look at the cross. How can you go to a God that loves you that much? He says, come boldly to me because of what my Son did on the cross. Come boldly to me. Come speak my word with power and authority. It is so time for His children to wake up and realize who they are. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I was made holy by the blood of the cross. I was sanctified by the Holy Spirit who continually works in me day by day. Hallelujah. Now in and of myself, oh God, I'll leave that alone. <laughs> I don't go there anymore. I don't go to self anymore. Because there's no help in that human thing that I used to be. But more and more day by day, I'm finding the less I even look at me, and the more I'm looking at give me Jesus, the more freedom I have to worship Him, to serve Him, to minister. I went to Smith's looking for something the other day for coffee stirs. Um, Deborah Simpson told me where they were in the store. I probably looked right at them because I ran into about six people I haven't seen in a while. I want to pray with them, talking with them. And then out the door, I went and never found them. Okay. Um, but you know what was beautiful? Because I'm, he's, he has been so merciful to me, so long suffering and patient with me. That's a miracle law. I don't even understand his patience with us. I don't know about any of you, but this Irish kid was mighty stubborn. <laughs> Believe that. Not me, right, honey? No. <laughs> Say it. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. You're so good. But remember something. The reason that you're afraid to speak the word, you know why? Because you haven't given God permission to search you and know my heart. Because He's going to touch stuff in your heart. And He's going to take stuff out. You know why you don't walk on the narrow road? Because you're too angry over here. I'm not walking there. Heck, most of us blame God for the stuff happening to us. And He had nothing to do with it. A lot of the hurts and pains we have in life are our own doing. God was trying to warn us the whole time. But yet we knew better than God did. Oh Lord, have mercy on us all. In James, the first chapter... When you're not a healed, restored vessel and you haven't given God permission to search your heart and know what's in you, which He already does, by the way. It says in Hebrews, you stand open and naked before God. So let me tell you something. You don't have anything hidden from Him. The Bible says there's nothing hidden from an Almighty God. Nothing. He sees and knows all, and He does. Test Him on that one sometime, and He'll show you how much He knows and how little we know. In James 1, verses 6 to 8, But let him ask in faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Down in James 4.8, purify your heart, you double-minded. An unhealed heart will actually make you a double-minded person. Because you're going to question when God says, here's a promise from me here. I'm going to do this for you. But if you have a wounded heart and you still got issues that aren't settled by God, you haven't given Him permission to search your heart, you know what happens? Now you're trying to believe God from a wounded heart instead of a healed heart. That's what makes you question God's Word. It literally, he showed me that this week, how even in my journey with Him, how so many times I was, He would say something to me and I'm going, yeah, sure, right. I go just like that to God. Yeah, sure, right. Because He hadn't gotten into the bottom of my heart yet. I hadn't given him permission to really search the depths of my heart and show me the ugliness that was still in there. Mm. And when you see that stuff, then he starts to deal with it. He brings it up. You forgive. You let go. Then you become merciful. Then you become forgiving. And then you become more like Christ. Amen. Then when God makes you a promise, you'll speak it and you'll believe it. Because now you're healed and restored. You've got nothing. We should never have anything against one human being. Everybody goes, you don't understand? Yes, I do. I've shared some of you what I've been through in life. Some of the abuse and other traumas I've been through in life, that was only a, a tip of the iceberg. I went through stuff so He could make me more merciful. What you've been through so when God heals you, you can help others. The more I've allowed God to heal what's in my heart and the damage I've been through to my soul, the more merciful you become. The more God's love can come out of you. 
the more people are going to walk up to you, they're going to be drawn to you because they're going to see a tenderness in you that can only come from God. Amen. They know it comes from God because it can't come from a human. Because we are imperfect vessels. They'll know that they know that they know that you've spent time with Jesus. And that He has ministered His love to you and you're ministering His love to others. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody's afraid to let God touch them here today. He knows what hurts you. You need to give it to Him. Whatever that's for right now, you give Him that pain. Or you're going to carry it when you leave here. And you're not going to get healed. You're not going to get restored. And you're going to know that there was always more with Jesus Christ. He loves you so much. Amen. The last thing He wants you to do is carry pain. No, no, no. And He's the only one that can fix it. He's the only one that can restore the damage that was done. God didn't come to make an old creation rebuilt. When you come to Christ, He says, I make you a new creation. He's going to make everything new from the inside out. What a life of peace and joy in the Holy Ghost that is. Oh, I felt everybody's heart sinking. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> but remember, see again. Romans 2.29, Colossians 2nd chapter, circumcision of the heart. Not made with hands, but with the Holy Spirit. Remember, Jesus died. He said, I must die this way so the Holy Spirit will come. That river of life that flows down the middle of heaven, that comes from heaven to come into us, is the only one that can restore you and keep you a sanctified vessel for His glory. You can't do it in and of human nature or new human abilities, no power. It can't happen. God won't allow it. I've had people come up and quote so many scriptures to me. People have been in the ministry 15, 20, 30 years and I'm sitting there and I'm listening and I'm listening and some of these I was around when I was a young Christian. I'm going, wait, my mentors are telling me this. You guys are telling me this. Wait a minute. But everything they said was hard. It was a real negative meaning behind it. It wasn't coming from a healed vessel. It was carnal. It was legalistic. It brought judgment. It brought condemnation. That all got erased to Calvary. Never even let somebody talk to you that brings condemnation nor judgment against you. Ever. Ever, ever, ever. He never came to judge nor condemn but to save and to heal and to restore. Jesus loves us. Your Heavenly Father will convict you when you are misbehaving. Everybody says, well, God loves me. Yes, He does. He loves you so much. If you go out and do your own thing, He's going to meet you there. <laughs> He's going to say, come on, we need to talk. Like my mother would look at me when we were young. Your father will be home in two hours. <laughs> you went, you hid under the bed because you knew your days were numbered. We were terrified of that little man. So, but with God, I know when, he's, when he convicts me and I'm wrong, I know to get on my knees because he's going to hug me and love me. And he said, this is what you've done. I take accountability, renounce and repent, and I will forgive it and remember it no more. God has never come to me with judgment. Amen. Even when I was making mistake after mistake as a young Christian, did some things happen to me physically? Yes, my fault. But guess what? He always came to me in love. And when he took me through the chastening, I came out a better vessel. I came out into a place of oneness with Him that I didn't have before it. I learned wisdom from making mistakes. I learned wisdom. Like I said, you people are asking for more and more wisdom every day? Careful. He's going to show you how much you need His wisdom and not yours. He's going to show you you need the mind of Christ, not yours. He's going to show you He knows a few things about you. Amen? Amen. 1 Corinthians 2nd chapter, when you go back and read that sometimes 6 to 16, it talks about the carnally minded man can't even know the things of God, nor to, to discern them. So if you pick up this Bible and you read it with your mind, and not the Holy Spirit teaching you, what you're going to have is a lot of carnal knowledge. You'll never speak the Word of God with authority then. Because it won't be alive in here. It'll be in your head. God's Word lives in here. In here. Not here. Not here. Because your mind will try and refute God's Word, actually. Your carnal mind will. My spiritual mind, every promise God says, it's yes and amen in Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thy Word is truth. Thy Word is power. Thy Word is infallible. Thy Word cannot be hindered nor stopped by anything. It says in Isaiah, 
what God has begun, nothing can reverse it. Nothing can hold back the Word of God. Nothing can contain it. Nothing can even slow it down in your lives when you Amen. learn to speak it with authority. Hallelujah. But if you don't let God in to heal you and to restore you, you'll say, oh, in the name of Jesus, and you're going to be looking down like this. No. No. Father, I come before you in Jesus' name as your son. You said if we anoint the sick with oil, they will be healed. They will be restored. Hallelujah. I believe it. You know why? Because I've yes. seen it. I've lived it. I know it. If this temple can be rebuilt after the damage I did for 37 years, there's hope for everybody on this planet. I don't want to hear what diseases they got. It got taken care of there. Diseases of the curse of the Lord. We don't live under a curse. We live under grace and truth and the power Hallelujah. of Almighty God that came to heal us by His stripes and His yes, holy name. Lord. Oh, Lord Jesus, come. That was my prayer this morning. I hardly prayed at all. I said, open their hearts to the power of thy word that lives Ooh, within them. Jesus. Show them the power that's in here and to start speaking with authority. <laughs> we should never walk around like this. First of all, it's false humility. Get it. Come on, please. Mm -hmm. God wants you to walk and says uprightly. Yes, Lord. It's not arrogance. It's confidence in my king. I got confidence in God and in the power of that living word. Like I said, he's been transforming me. And the more I've let go of me, and I don't know how he does it. He just does it. If you give him permission today to change your heart and your soul and to restore you with oneness that we lost in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve, he wants to bring us back to a spiritual state with him where we are so united in Christ, oh, we Jesus. flow in the river of life. Yes, Lord. Nothing can touch you there. Because the flow never stops from heaven. When they stuck that spear in his side, that river of life came from heaven down through us back into heaven to keep us as a family of one. That's why I preach unity all the time. Because when we're united in Christ, all the light is going to shine. I want this whole building to glow in this town. And it won't come from man-made light. It'll come from His light. Amen. Thank you. Oh, hallelujah. They'll come in here one way looking to find fault with what we preach and believe here. And what they're going to get is the Holy Ghost and the love of Jesus. That's what they're going to get in this house. Hallelujah. In Mark 11. This is where you come to when you allow God to heal you. Or do you believe or do you still have doubts and worries like it says in Psalm 139, all your anxieties? That word anxiety is doubts, fears, worry. What it is, a lack of faith in Almighty God and His Word. That's what it is. That's what anxiety is. You don't believe Him. But there's reasons you've been hurt that you don't believe. And God understands. He's here to heal you from that unbelief. Amen. Mark 11, 22-24. So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. There you go. What are we saying? Faith today? Thank you, Jesus. For surely I say to you, whoever... That doesn't say pastors and evangelists, does it? <coughs> does it? Yeah. That's all of you. The whoever is all of you. Not me. All of us. Whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, and does not doubt in where? His heart. But believes those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Now, don't get carried away with yourself. I don't want you getting on your knees when this is all over and said, it says I can have. <coughs> Watch the word I. Because I opens up the door to being in love with the world again. God says, I'm going to give you the abundant life. God says you're going to prosper in all things, even under your health, even as your soul prospers. That's the power of the living word. But do you believe that he's going to keep you fresh and flourishing? I forget where I was here. They said, they were saying, they asked me how old I was. I said, 59 and a half, and they went, excuse me? I said, actually, I'm 22 and a half because that's how long I've really been alive. The first 37 years don't count. He's dead, and he can't come back. He's not welcome here anymore. Amen. I'm a new man in Christ, and he is restoring all the years that were taken from me. It's almost like I, I stumbled off. I said, this, I don't even know what to say anymore because I feel so good at the age I'm at, and everything I went through the first 37 years, it's like that never happened. He's literally erased the first 30. Did I learn from that? 
Does it make me more compassionate to people in the street that drink and take drugs and all the other stuff they're doing? Yes. I understand why they're there. They didn't get there on their own. They didn't get up one day and say, I'm going to go be this, this. No, they, they got hurt. They got abandoned. They got abused. Something happened generationally in their family that got handed down to them. If there weren't generational iniquities, you wouldn't have alcoholics and drug addicts and white beaters and murderers and bank robbers and everything else. You wouldn't have that if something wasn't handed down to the third and fourth generation. But I have the power of the living word to set me free from what was. Because what was is no more. I live in the present, right here, right now, with an expectation of a great and awesome future with Jesus living through me. Amen? Amen. And that should be your expectation this new year. God, what great things are you going to do through me? Not that you're going to do. That whole God will... You know what you need to do? You need to pray and obey. Amen. You want to see God do a great work with you? Pray and obey. Learn to hear that voice. The sheep will hear my voice, Jesus says. Spend quiet time with God. Make it happen. Say, God, I need quiet time with you. And He will give it to you. We'll find somebody to watch the girls. <laughs> my wife even had a dream about that, by the way. No, because you, ha you need quiet time with Jesus. You know why? Because He wants to come put His arms around you. He wants to come search your heart and know what's hurt you. And show you what's hurt you. And heal you from it. And if you don't have quiet time with Him, that should be the number one hunger you have in your heart this year. I want you. Jesus, I want you and I want more of you. I need you. There's nothing wrong with saying you're weak. The Bible says to boast in it. People look at me, God's let me work out again. Yeah, I'm getting stronger than I've ever been. I'm 50 and a half years old. I'm getting stronger now than when I was 20. Okay, thank you, Jesus. Uh, that restoring your youth is an ego thing? He means it. Um, but the thing is, but I know in and of myself, I am weak, I am hopeless, I am incompetent, I can do nothing right apart from Jesus. You know why the Word says so? But if I trust in the Word to keep me, to use me, to live through me, then all the promises come. But if I try and make those promises happen, and I go out to do them, they're not going to happen. Because I put my two cents in. And I checked the book this morning that says, My sheep will hear my voice. Sheep are not the smartest pumpkins in the patch. They need a shepherd. Okay? He calls us sheep so we realize, Lord, we need you. We need... And is a pastor a shepherd? Yeah, but he's a junior shepherd. Remember, there's one big shot in the universe. It's Jesus. We're little shots. We have to remember who's who here. Remember who's earth. Who's, what stool is that? Is that any of yours? No, I didn't think so. Now, everywhere the sole of our foot is touched, he told Joshua, I'll give you the land as a joint heir. Because every star is his, every bird is his, every fish, every animal, every tree, every river, every home, yeah. every car, everything that the natural eye can see belongs to God. Oh, Remember something, we're joint heirs. When <laughs> he owns it. Remember something, whatever you think you own today, give it back to its rightful owner. And then God will bless it. Amen. It's the same thing when I tell people about giving money here. He'll give it back to its rightful owner for him to distribute and do what he sees best with it. Because he will make you a good steward of what he's given you. We're to be good stewards of the blessings from above. Amen. The blessings don't own us. He still owns us. Don't lose the difference in there. Because now you're getting back out on that wide road. I've watched so many children of God get shipwrecked because they were walking on a narrow path. The blessings came, but the blessings became their life and not the blesser. It is easy to do. I've watched it. I've watched it over and over again. So many of God's children, they get off that narrow road. They get on a wide road because now it's about things and possessions and not about speaking to the mountain and watching it move. Amen? Amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. The power of the living word. When you speak from your tongue, Proverbs 18, what is that? 20 and 21, a man's stomach shall be satisfied and filled with the fruit of his lips, for death and life are in the power of the tongue, and you will eat the fruit thereof. Oh. So if you get up tomorrow morning and say, oh man, it's going to be a lousy week, all this stuff's going to go wrong, and you start speaking that, that goes against, he says he's going to bless every step you take. You went against the Word of God, not me, 
Not anything else. So if you get up, I'm tired. So I hear people, oh man, I'm so this, I'm so that. I'm... Next thing you know, they're sick. They speak themselves sick. Because what comes off your tongue is like God. God said, let there be light. What happened? There was light. There was light. God said, separate the waters on the earth. We dry land. We had continents. God said, let the oceans be filled with fish. There was fish. Let the, bird, let the air be filled with birds. There was birds. God said, by the word of His mouth, by the word of your mouth, you have God living in you. By the word of His mouth, everything was created. Amen. Everything. Let us make man in our image and likeness. Took dirt. See, you girls didn't have to go through that. You need to be thankful. You got a rib. You didn't get made out of the ground, right? Now, we had to get made from the dirt. So that being said, though, and then he blew what? The breath of life into them. God created us. You have the same creative power living in you, and you don't even know it. When I speak this word, I expect it to happen. Amen. You know why? Because he said he will. Hallelujah. Not because of me. Yes, Please. <laughs> I didn't make the universe. I wasn't there when he did yes, all this. Jesus. And he reminds me daily that I was not. Just to make sure I, I stay at my rightful place before God. Okay, if we stay at our rightful place... He gets bigger and bigger, and bigger and bigger, and bigger and bigger, till this world can't bring anxieties, nor doubts, nor fears, nor insecurities, because now you know who you were made in the likeness of. You were made in the likeness of God and given the same authority God had when He spoke the whole universe into existence. Think about what's in you today. The creative Word of God that made everything. And you're a bunch of characters, and you know it. <laughs> the body of Christ is made up of characters, ain't we? Yes. We are. We're a bunch of characters. We're all a little different. We're all unique, though. But you made in His likeness. He's Elohim, the God of many faces. Think about what He was thinking when He made me. My God, what was He thinking? I go, what were you thinking when you did that? <laughs> and He goes, you'll get over it and I'll get going to what I told you. See what I'm saying? He loves me just the way I am. He does. He loves me because He made me. In His likeness. God can't even come against something that He loves. Now, can He chase in me? Yes. But will He ever judge anybody in this room or anybody that's a born-again believer? Never. You will never face judgment. What was done through you, whether you did it for yourself or for God, is where you get your out of boys in heaven. Christians miss that. They think they're out doing a lot of do's and don'ts and everything. Oh, yeah, I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm doing. Did God lead you? Huh? I said, did you ask? <laughs> so all you're doing, you'll still go to heaven, but those crowns that He's got for you, if you let His Spirit lead you, then the Spirit lives through you, those are the things that are going to get you out of, boys, when you get to heaven. I want everything He's got for me. I've got everything I need already on the earth. God loves me. My wife loves me. I'm good to go. I got beautiful ministry. I got wonderful brothers and sisters in Christ that love me. I'm already more blessed than probably 99% of the people on the earth. I'm already that blessed. So whatever else comes, that, that's just icing on the cake like they say. It really is. Because I'm already a blessed, prosperous, healed, restored man because the Bible says so. The Word of God does. Amen. And, I, and I'm just in agreement with what God said about me. I'm his son. You are his sons and daughters. That's who we are. It says so. Thank you. Jesus. Know what the word says about you, and you'll start speaking it with a boldness and a confidence. Watch what God did. Hebrews 11, 1 to 3. Thank you, Lord. Have faith in the living word today, amen. Amen. Listen. Really? On a Sunday? <laughs> I know who that is. Thank you, Jesus. Garrett. Gotta be. <laughs> Just talked to him for a half hour last night. I guess it wasn't enough. <laughs> How much? How much you want to bet? How much? So I need to smash you. <clears throat> Place your 
I thought I, I thought I gave enough counsel last night. I guess not. Oh Jesus. Hebrews 11, 1 through 3. Now faith is the substance of things what? Hope for. The evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed. By what? The Word. The living Word of God. So that the things which are seen are not made of the things which are visible. Genesis 1. In the beginning God said by the word of His mouth. So many Christians miss out on God's best and, and, and the blessings He has for you. You know why? Because He gives you a promise and it doesn't happen tomorrow by 6 a.m. <laughs> you get up in the morning, well, where is it? No, no, and no. The men of old had such faith. You know why? Because the one who made the promise. They didn't go by what they saw. Could you imagine? <laughs> Most of them looked at Red Sea. <laughs> well, if these people want to go back to Egypt. What's up? What do you mean? No, they want to go back to Egypt and, eat and go back into slavery. Do you really want to go back into slavery? When God makes you a promise, He'll prepare you to receive His best. Amen. So don't take a promise and then put Him on a, on a stopwatch. Because you will miss what God has for you, and you've all done it, and so have I. I got smiles in the back row over there. Because we've all done it, God comes and makes a promise, and then we start looking for it. You know what happens when you start looking for the promise? You forget about the one that made it to you. Focus on the one that makes the promises that are all yes and amen in Christ. And then it'll get here at the proper time. Ecclesiastes 3, there's a time and a place for every event done to heaven. So many of his children, me included, made mistakes, was presumptuous. Okay, you made the promise. I took it and I started running. I was out of that starting gate, boy. I was that quarter horse. Wham! But only I went 400 yards and I crashed. <laughs> I said, what happened? Did I give you a time frame when that was coming? I made a promise. Now you wait on me because you're not ready for the promise yet. You're not prepared. He told me I was getting married soon. It was 10 years later I got married. So that soon thing, folks, let me tell you something. His soon and yours is different. <laughs> it is way different. It is way different. I told you, I went to church that next day and I looked around and went, wow, where is she? <laughs> okay then. <laughs> a couple months later when I came to my senses, what happened? He says, you're not even close to ready yet. You don't see women the way I do yet. I was still a young Christian. My vision and his weren't lined up right yet, okay? Amen. Hadn't been out of the streets all that long. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. But in his mercy, in his sovereignty <laughs> over me, he, but you know what he did, though? I said, keep me until the proper time. You know what he did? He kept me till the proper time, till the promise came. I waited for the promise. I said, give me the grace to wait for the promise. I quit thinking about it, and actually I went back the other way. After that, I'm, I'm never getting married. Don't want nothing to do with it. Me, you, and the dog, we do just fine. Girls, they be the devil. You leave them out of my life, I'm doing just fine the way I am. Because when you come from the streets, your, your perception... Let me tell you something, there's any of you before Christ that looked at the opposite sex the right way. Not one of you did. I didn't. I didn't respect them the way they were made in God's image. No, I did not. A lot of my thinking that was still buried in my subconscious still wasn't very holy. And God had to change my thinking before He would bring me a godly wife. So I would see her the way He does. And as a young Christian, I wouldn't have seen her the way He sees her. So I thank God that He was so merciful and understanding that He changed my heart and my mind to see every creature made in His likeness and not the way I see them. Or if she's not my wife, if I don't allow Him to change me, I don't have the promise. I would have missed the promise. I really would have missed, I would have missed out on having her by my side serving Jesus. Think about that. You will miss God's promises if you expect them to happen when you want them. Because most Christians are not ready to receive His best yet. Because that you don't know who you are yet. Amen. Until you realize you're a child of royalty, He's dressed you in a robe of righteousness, a garment of salvation. You are clothed with Christ Jesus. How are you going to have God's best for you until you see yourself as a redeemed child of God? He has so much for so many of us, and we miss it because we put conditions on Him when He never puts them on us other than to pray and obey. 
You want God's best for you? I want God's best for me. I told you how I feel. I want everything. I'm going to bless you. I want all of Abraham's blessings being poured into this building, so we need one five times this size. So we feed this entire city. I don't need the government to do it. I need God to arise in here and show us how to do it right. Because God's the only one that gets it right. Mankind has messed up His plan from the beginning. When we get to heaven, I don't know if we get to knock Adam and Eve on the head with a mallet. I don't know how that works. <laughs> I don't know if we get to go in and go, do you realize what you did? But I don't think we're going to care because I've got a We won't really care because I've been in eternal glory. And I'll tell you what, when you get there, all you do is go, huh? Because it takes you over in ways you've never known. Thy word is going to take you home. Amen. Hebrews 11, 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please Him, for the one who comes to Him must believe that He is, and is a reward of those who diligently seek Him. Amen. This He threw in here late last night in Mark 7. I went back and reread that. The reason most people don't speak God's Word with authority, because they have too many teachings of men in them. It says the doctrines of men, the teachings of men, make God's Word of no effect. When it's a carnal teaching, oh, yes. what it does, it takes the power out of the Word because it came from man and not from heaven. Oh, amen. Go back and study that in Mark 7. The doctrines, the teaching of man make God's Word. You take the power out of the living Word of God and you put it over here because you think up here. I've watched people quote scriptures oh, at me. They had no ounce of authority in their voice. I stood there and go, God, we need to pray for you. <laughs> Because there's nothing... It, when I speak, it comes from in here. Not here. Not here. Because when I got saved, God took all that out. Thank you, Jesus. Um, spiritual lobotomy, I call it. But he, he... Like I said, though, it doesn't happen overnight. If you leave here today and say, God, I want to be more like you. I want to speak with authority. Please don't expect it's going to happen in 60 seconds. Because it won't. It takes time. God knows how much we can handle. He is so gentle with us. That's another thing I can't even understand. He is so gentle and merciful to every one of His children. Amen. If we would just embrace His kindness as a father like no other. Thank you, Jesus. But He wants to transform you into that. So that's why it says in the Bible, test the spirits whether they are of God. Test these men and God and women of God that you listen to. You read their books. You watch them on TV. Test what they're saying. Write it down. Go back. Cross-reference the Scriptures. That's why Bible studies in here. I hand the sheets out here. Go home and study it. The Holy Spirit will show you what I'm... And if I'm wrong, believe me something, God will correct me. That's why I spend so much time alone with God, so that when I'm in front of you, He has fed me by His Spirit what He wants to feed you, so you grow and mature in the power of the living Word of God. So we all walk that victorious life. This isn't just for a few select people. It says, whoever believes on Him, the mountains will move. This isn't for a select group. The select group is the entire church of Jesus Christ. That's the select group. That's whoever believes. And we should all walk empowered like that. But let God have you today and He will change you. Your faith that you got, when they said, I need faith like you got. No, you already got it. What do you mean? You all got a mustard seed when you got saved. No tiny seed. God put it right in here. You know why it doesn't grow? Because you doubt, you fear, and you don't believe. Put God to the... It says you can't test God, but you can in one respect. When you come to Him and say, Lord, you made me a promise. You said you're not a man that you can lie. I trust you to show me what's up. It says, call upon my name. I'll answer, honor, rescue, and deliver you. Psalm 91, 15, one of my favorite verses. I know if I call upon God, He's going to answer me. I may not get the answer I want. Oh, I got laughed in the back row over there. That's the biggest problem with people. They ask, He says it. I didn't hear from God. Yeah, you did. You just didn't like what He said. And that's what it comes down to. You didn't like what He said. His plans and His ways are perfect. They're holy. They're just. They're true. They're righteous. Every bit of it. And if someone comes to you and you think you've heard a promise from God, but it doesn't line up with the holiness and righteousness of God, it didn't come from Him. That's how you test the spirits. Well, God promised me this, and they go right down this whole worldly list. And I'm going, no, no, you got a different voice in your head. Because what they're saying was everything ungodly. 
God says, I'm going to supply all your natural needs. The birds eat. They don't worry about food. God feeds them. How much more worth, worth are you to the Father who made you in His image? See, we really have to get our thinking transformed into the thinking of the Son of God, who emptied Himself, got refilled back up, walked in all power and authority, and never sinned. Now, if He did that, you have Him in you, you should be able to walk the same way. Because you have the power of the living Word in you. Remember something, this isn't just a book, it's alive. Let it live in you. Give it permission to live in you. Oh, hallelujah. In John 14, Most assuredly I say to you, He who believes in me, the living Word, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. Oh, do you believe that God's good? Now, let me tell you something. <laughs> You're not going to heal anybody. You're not going to save anybody. The living Word in you is going to do all that. So that pressure shouldn't even be on you. Well, i got to go out and lay hands on the sick. No, you don't. He'll bring the sick to you. And then when you lay hands on them, you'll feel God in you go through you and out of you and heal that person. Will He do greater works? Yes. The blind should see, the lame should walk, the deaf should hear, and the dead should be raised in every ministry in the world. Because Jesus says, the living word says, I'm going to do, everybody thinks, well, I'm going to go out and heal. Really, God bless you. See how that works for you. Um, God in us heals. God in us saves. God in us gives us words of knowledge and wisdom and discernment to help people. God in us counsels all people around us. Like I said, I have no confidence in me, which is a great thing, because then God's Spirit can come up and give me the right words. He can help people. Left to myself, I know I'll make a mess of it, because I'm going to put my two cents in, and it's really not worth a whole lot. Um, you can know and read all the books you want, get as educated as you want, have as a high IQ as you want. The last time I checked the human race, there isn't anybody that knows everything but God. Who know, he knows what every human being on the planet is doing right now. He knows where every fish in the sea is right now. He knows where every animal on dry land is right now. Can you imagine that kind of knowledge? We can't, though. It's too far above us. But I believe that he's going to do greater work. See, when I got born again, I got born again into a ministry where signs, wonders, and miracles, they were just a common occurrence. Got there, we worship Jesus, he arose. That's why in here, if somebody's even sick during the service, we stop everything and pray for them. That's the way I was raised by all my mentors. If somebody's struggling and I see that, and God says, stop everything, go pray for a person, that's what we're going to do. That's how I was raised in the body of Christ. Jesus doesn't say, hey, wait for two hours. Come back a week from Tuesday. When we got time, we'll pray for you. No, let me touch you right now. He's a God that immediately touches lives and restores them. Read the book of Mark, those first four or five chapters. Immediately they were healed. Immediately they were set free. Immediately they were fed. That word immediately is over and over and over and over again. The first four or five chapters, they must use that word about 40 times. It's amazing how we as a body of Christ have gotten to the point... Well, yeah, maybe. There are no maybes with God. He said it, it is, and it'll be. Amen. Stop doubting who you belong to. <clears throat> but do you believe? We're going to close with 1 John, 2nd chapter, verses 5 and 6. If you don't let God heal you, this can't happen. You won't believe that God's going to do greater works with you than He did while He walked the earth. You won't believe unless you let Him in to heal your broken heart and restore your soul. So that you can become a single-minded vessel on the things of God instead of a double-minded vessel. What I read in James there, it's so important that we realize you become double-minded because of your pain. Let God fix the pain you'll be single-minded with Christ again. A double-minded person doesn't really believe because of questions. We can't question God. Who are we? <laughs> really? He made the universe. Come on now. In the beginning, God said, He spoke the living word. You should be doing the same. But whoever keeps His word, truly, the love of God is perfected in Him. If you truly keep Him, His word, the living word, then His love will be perfected in you. You know what a perfected love is? A healed heart and a restored soul. He said, Psalm 19, Psalm 23, He restores your soul. He brings it back to oneness with Him, what He created you to be. Hallelujah. By this we know that we are in Him. 
He who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as he walked. You won't walk as Jesus Christ walked if you don't let him in to test your heart and to check what's in your heart and to heal your heart. You won't walk with him because you'll still have your same doubts, your same anxieties, your same fears. You'll still be walking with a broken heart instead of a healed heart. That's why it's on the ministry card. He's come to heal the broken heart. And you notice that starts first. God came. The first thing he says why he came wasn't even to save, but to heal the broken hearted. To heal the broken hearted. There isn't anybody walking the face of this earth that hasn't had their heart broken numerous times. Not just once in a while, but numerous times. Life happens, you all know that. But it is so time for us to put ourselves down and allow God to take us over. To restore you, to mend you, to heal you. Letting go of you is the hardest thing in the world to do because you've carried you for so long. Yeah, you've carried yourself. The world told you to. Your parents told you to. Pastors told you to. Be strong. Get over it. Suck it up. Talk about somebody that doesn't know the Word of God. The Bible says, come to God and boast in your weaknesses. For in your weaknesses, His strength will be made manifested in you. His power of His Word will be manifested in you. If you go to God and you say, make me into a mighty Christian, we'll start praying for you now. Because as soon as you use the word, I am going to be, you've eliminated the divine plan of His sovereignty for your existence here on this earth. It is so important that we go back to a place of obedience and submission to His sovereign Lordship over our lives. Because if you don't go to Him as a submitted vessel, you're not going to let Him touch what's hurt you. You're not going to let Him restore you and mend you. You won't. Because submission means what? Surrender. You're taught this world never to step back, to be strong, Take it on the chin, all that stuff I was raised with. Oh, so you got some cracked ribs. Okay, go to work. And so, you're in pain. So I was raised. It was scary the way I was raised. She always asked me why I was so stubborn and why I'd go to work and I'd be hurt and I did this and that wrong with me. Oh, no, I'm fine. She watched me go out the door with three cracked ribs. Never missed a minute of work. She's looking at me going, really? <laughs> she doesn't know where I got it from. See what I mean by generational? My dad raised us. He didn't care if you were sick, if you were dying. Get up and go do what you were told to do. Period. End of conversation. God says, come to me. Submit to me because I'll never do that to you. Remember, his love is so different. It's so pure. His love is so much more than what we're going to ever be able to even comprehend here. But let it happen. When you submit yourself, submission under his sovereignty, what you're submitting to is the God of all love that has no conditions on you other than you love Him back. And He'll give you the grace to do that, by the way. He knows we can't love in and of ourselves. We have to have His love and grace and presence in us. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. It's all about you submitting yourselves to the One who died for you. You want to live an empowered life? Speak in His Word with authority. Let Him heal what's ever broken your heart today. But it won't be easy. Because some of you are hanging on to stuff that you got no business hanging on to. You're not allowed. The only person you're hurting is you. The only one that's not going to fulfill their purposes. And believe me something, we're in a day and age in the body of Christ where whoever doesn't fulfill their purposes, God's already raising people up next to you. He's showing me that. Just like the world leaders. <coughs> okay, you want to turn away from God? I'll raise up some that will serve me. Remember something, the king's hearts, all these leaders are in God's hands and he's trying to change them back to him. They don't want to go. They don't fear God, they will. But my fear of God is an awe and reverence of Him. He's taught me that I can I cannot get it right every day, and He's still going to love me. Just because I made a mistake tomorrow afternoon if I do something wrong, He's not going to stop loving me. He's not like people. He came in the flesh, but He is so much above that. Remember something, today is your day to make a choice. I no longer want to be who I am. I want to be who you want me to be. I want to walk empowered. I want to speak your word with authority. I want that victorious life that you've already given me. 
it was already taken care of. So let Jesus help. Because when I was up there before and I saw that, some of the hearts, he understands what you've been through. He was there when you went through it. You don't think so, but he was. I judged God for a lot of years what I went through as a baby. You know what? He was there the whole time. It could have been worse. It could have been worse. And he's healed me from that. And everyone that was a part of that has been forgiven and turned back over to God. The one I was angry with was the devil thought he could get a hand up on me. My whole attitude is no darkness is allowed. What's in your heart opens the door to darkness, not light. So today, what's ever hurt you, he understands. He was there. He was still protecting you. It could have been worse. So give it to him today. Hallelujah. Let him have your heart today. Let him restore you today. Make that choice today. Don't wait till tomorrow. Don't wait till January 1st this week. Don't wait. Today's your day to get set free in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And Father, we come before you, knowing if we call upon you in the name of your Son, Jesus, what we pray and believe in, you will do. <coughs> Jesus, you said when we pray to the Father in your name, he will do it, that he be glorified because of sending you to that cross. Because that's what gives us access into the healing throne room of God. I pray healing on everybody in here. I pray a blessing of grace and peace and mercy, a renewing of the Holy Spirit to refresh and rewater every vessel in this room. Lord, but not just in this ministry, but in the ministries around the earth today as everybody's going to a church building. Fill those buildings anew with the life of Christ, with holiness and righteousness. Sanctify every child of God on this earth so we come back to doing your will and not our will, O oh God. Father, we thank you for the work that you've begun in all of us. Lord, we thank you right now that your love is touching every heart in this building, right here, right now. Your love is going to overpower every hurt and pain, and you're going to bring healing and restoration. God, help us to be more like you. We can do nothing right in and of ourselves, but we thank you that we are your redeemed children, set aside for your glory. Father, we just bless the holy name of Jesus. You alone are worthy of praise and honor and glory, O oh God. We thank you for this awesome day and what lies ahead. And Lord, comfort. Bring your comforting touch right now to every vessel in here. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen.